Okay, in this demo we're going to talk through an actual real-world decentralized app, or DAP, and um, we have a fictitious uh, pizza company here, so we're going to show uh, three parties engaging in a transaction, um, and we'll actually show how that can be orchestrated with smart contracts in the Ethereum chain, and in this case we're actually using Strato as the backend, um, so we're going to be using uh, that as our blockchain, and then we'll be using block at the middle tier, and then we'll have our dApp built on top of that. So in order to get up to speed with this, first thing we would need is obviously Strato uh, for our backend blockchain, and I have an instance running here already. We mentioned this earlier. I'll do it really quickly. Uh, essentially, you just click on the new block up here in the top left, click on there, type in Strato or blockchain. Either one will bring up a list of results here, and then we can click on uh, Strato. Again, we have a description about what it does. We have all the documentation for Strato. So when you start working with it, and if you click on the Create button down here in the lower left corner, um, you can actually get an instance of it and start running with it. I have the instance already provisioned, so we're good to go there. Uh, and then on the Pizza app, uh, the DAP itself is up here in GitHub. Um, so you can come up here to this location. And that's Block Apps Pizza Demo. So in here, um, you can download all the code, and they have nice kind of walkthroughs for different environments, uh, Vagrant or Azure or whatnot. So you can come up here, take a look at that stuff. This is where the bits are to get the thing running. Uh, and I have that running on this machine here, which also has a block instance on it. OK, so let's, uh, let's dive into the app here and see how this thing actually works. So if we pop open a browser here, and this is my endpoint on port 9000, uh, right here is our Azure endpoint. And so, um, again, it's a bit of a contrived example, but it gets our point across. So we have three parties that are going to be working with this transaction. We have a buyer who's actually interested in, in purchasing a pizza. We have an oracle who's going to be a third-party intermediary who's going to decide between uh, who gets paid uh, based on the outcome. And then Pizza Maker is obviously the guy who's minting the pizzas. So if we log in as the Pizza Maker, you'll see right now that he has a balance of 1,000 Ether. He's got a, some open and closed uh, offerings here right now. He actually has a pepperoni open here. Let's go ahead and create a new one, and we'll make a sausage one, and we'll make that for five as well. So when we click on that, we're actually basically creating a contract. So you can see here, here's the contract address out on the blockchain. And um, here's the balance that's on there. There's nothing in there right now uh, because nobody's funded it. The price is five, and uh, you know it's a sausage pizza. So if we log out of here and log in as the buyer, you can see we can see all the contracts as well. So we're just enumerating those. And you can see that we have a pepperoni and a sausage available. So I'll go ahead and pick the sausage one. Uh, and I'll say, yeah, I want to go ahead and fund this. So I want to buy this thing. So when I say I want to buy it, it's going to say, well, you need to sign that transaction. Remember, when we put any transaction on the blockchain, we're signing it. So we'll put in our password. And then that's it. So you can see up top here, if you looked really closely, uh, the buyer actually had his balance decremented by five. Now, the if we log in as the pizza maker right now, he, he didn't get paid right away. So the, the contract balance is actually holding that five right now. So at this point, I do have the button here, but we're going to ignore that for a second. What would typically happen is a, a, a pizza delivery man or whatnot would come and deliver the pizza. Now. You know, you can imagine in the future maybe an IoT device that's tracking the location of where that pizza delivery guy is, that he actually dropped the pizza off. We could verify it that way. We could ask the end user, once they receive the pizza, to uh, enter something on their mobile phone or something of that re nature. And so the Oracle could be automated in that fashion. But in this fashion, we're just we're going to act as the Oracle. We're going to act as the business logic. Um, so basically, we could come into uh, our sausage here that's been funded. Uh, you can see the buyer funded the pizza contract. The contract balance is five uh, because they basically uh, escrowed you know, five of this virtual currency to buy this. Um, and then we could rate the satisfaction delivery. Now, if I click happy um, that it's been delivered and the customer's happy, then the maker will get paid, the guy who actually sold the pizza. And if I click unhappy, uh, the buyer will get it. So let's just say he's happy. Um, and so the contract paid the pizza maker. And so if we go look at the pizza maker now, at his balance, you'll see that he has 1,005, 
ether now because he got paid for that. So this is just a simple example showing how we can orchestrate a uh, triple entry accounting um, showing that we people don't have direct control of that because you can imagine in a world where if someone just automatically gave the money directly to the guy who's selling something but he never delivered the product it would be hard to get that money back and thinking about these things in the future if you think about you know larger retail stores or online stores that you buy things through you're actually going through that process too right you're using your credit card and saying I want to pay for this and you know essentially there's some level of trust there that those people are not just going to run away with your money and not deliver the product or give you the right product. Uh, and, and so the larger companies always win there because they have a lot of uh, clout in the industry, that, that a reputation that they, they're not going to rip you off. Uh, in this case, we can make it more real time. You know, as the product is actually delivered, um, we can actually like trigger it based on business logic, uh, like I mentioned, IoT devices or, or something of that nature to actually trigger it to release the funds to the correct uh, parties. So I hope you get a sense of what a DAP actually looks like. You can look at the source code behind this. Um, very, It's out there on GitHub. You can play with it and actually modify it uh, for your uses as well. But it's a good way to kind of get started and understand how these DAPs work.